Well, I'm Ed Shao, and I have the privilege of teaching high-tech entrepreneurship in the engineering school at Princeton. I teach by the case method of uh, teaching and learning using Harvard Business School cases, where in reality, the, the students do the teaching. Every week, twice a week, you know, I would feel like I was the CEO of a multi-million dollar corporation. And that's just not an experience you get in a lot of other classes here at Princeton. So it's effectively giving uh, our undergrads, uh, a, I would say, because I went to Harvard Business School, um, a, a very like experience. A high-tech entrepreneurship really, for me, isn't about starting companies. It's an approach to life. Picking something that you're passionate about and following that not allowing yourself to be constrained by what seems like the normal way it's been done before. Oh, he, he really enjoys pulling surprises on, on us in class and, and, and hopefully inspiring us to be entrepreneurs ourselves. It, it really uh, you know, made, made me want to become an entre entrepreneur and, and kind of emulate um, some of the things Professor Xiao has done with his life. Um, he's, he's truly an amazing an amazing professor here at Princeton. Princeton is, is making itself quite unique in that it's not just entrepreneurship applied to private sector, but rather to apply the principles of innovation and, and implementation through risk taking uh, to social problems, social entrepreneurship, and addressing global challenges. I believe Princeton is an exceptional place for students who want to pursue careers in social entrepreneurship. The globalization, in the increasing internationalization of the school, I mean, its original mandate, right, um, uh, is that we're citizens of the world. If you can go through a Princeton education for four years and not once think about how, you know, the motto and service is really an integral part of the Princeton experience then I, I would question what you've been doing here for four years. And entrepreneurship is a great way to actually make service and commitment uh, through your academics. There are uh, p people throughout this campus that have concerns and have ideas to address the world's problems. And bringing the technology and those people together in entrepreneurial endeavors can really make a big difference in the world. Empower is a, a group of students from uh, Rutgers and Princeton University uh, that sets up waste to energy co-ops at landfill sites in the developing world. We use simple existing technology, that is biodigester technology, to produce methane, and that methane produces electricity. This uh, new energy access then becomes the nucleus for a host of uh, value-added community-owned businesses and services. We're looking for some sort of sustainable um, change in equilibrium, so we actually want um, the social and economic economic um, structure to change in such a way that um, people that are in a disadvantage can actually have better opportunities in a long-lasting way. So um, I think that, that that's why entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship specifically, is, is very valuable um, for service on campus. That, that's our ultimate aim, to actually set something up, um, you know, for, first of all at, at Karachi, which is our pilot project, and then uh, hopefully at other landfill sites all across the world. A group of us um, endowed a um, visiting professorship in uh, entrepreneurship. Gordon Bloom uh, and John Dana are two of the most recent um, visiting professors here. They were the dean's visiting professors in entrepreneurship. I think they've definitely had a huge impact on the entrepreneurial environment here. Gordon set, uh, set certain deadlines for us and that really uh, helped us come up with you know, uh, with components that would form the integral part of uh, the business plan later on. Last semester we saw about 10 to 15 teams um, working on their own startups to do with social entrepreneurship um, just because of kind of Professor Bloom's class. So it's a really great way to cross-pollinate, right, ideas between these major universities um, and to bring to our students really innovative thinking and ideas. They may teach a course but also offer uh, other programs and leave behind a legacy so that after several years we would have all of these fresh ideas from a variety of professors, from a variety of institutions and have made many of them our own. 
When I arrived in 1997, I, I think it's fair to say there really wasn't much formalized activity of entrepreneurship. There were student entrepreneurs, but they didn't have the encouragement, they didn't have the guidance, there weren't courses, there weren't clubs, there weren't programs, uh, and now all that exists. Certainly over the last few years, um, a lot of students have begun to get involved in their own startups. It's wonderful to have you know, a body of, of support to rely on um, friends, professors, you know, that want you to succeed, you know, as much as, or maybe even more so than you do. The Keller Center. I think it's great. I think having sort of a centralized location where people are just talking about entrepreneurship, collating all these different distributed and fragmented resources under one uh, under one umbrella, and providing the support necessary to make entrepreneurship you know, very significant. Uh, and you know, tangible presence on campus. I think we've definitely uh, managed to build more of a, a, an ecosystem around entrepreneurship that encourages collaboration. It doesn't matter what stage your idea is at, you know, whether it's just in conception or it's already in execution. You know, Princeton really is a great place to have an idea. One of the big pieces that makes uh, these entrepreneurship projects a reality is, is the support that we get from alumni. And that's not just financial support, but it's also support in terms of interest, reading over business plans, uh, tweaking things, bringing in other connections, and letting us know what's good and what's not so good about our project plans. The alumni you meet, it's amazing how much interest uh, they have. And Frankly, I always have time for Princeton students, and most alumni have time for Princeton students. For every entrepreneurial endeavor, you need a big idea and then someone who has the vision to recognize its potential and make it happen. In this case, the big idea was offering entrepreneurship courses and programs. The individual that recognized the potential was uh, Dean Jim Way. I contacted him in June of 97. He immediately saw the potential and by that September, we had 85 students signed up for a high-tech entrepreneurship course at Princeton when there were only 45 chairs in the classroom. I've offered uh, this high-tech entrepreneurship uh, course for 25 semesters. I'm going to keep doing it till I get it right. My name is Edward Wang. I'm Nikhil Vasutravedi. My name is Michael Smith. I'm Dahlia Nell. My name is Payaz al -Hak. My name is Darren Hamill. My name is Peter Kellner. I think I've, I've said more than I know. Thank <laughs> you.